qualitative, quantitative. If you're confused, if you're not sure what's the difference between the two and which one is the right for your research, then stick around for today's video because I'm going to explain the main differences between qualitative and quantitative approaches to doing research. Hey everybody, if you're new to this channel, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run AcademicEnglishNow.com where I help university students and researchers write better theses and papers. If you want more videos like this one and you want to find out more how to choose the correct method, qualitative and quantitative, then don't forget to follow my channel, subscribe so you don't miss future videos and we can continue improving your academic writing together here on this channel. So in this video I want to focus on the main methodological differences between the two big paradigms, quantitative and qualitative. And in all fairness there is a little bit of cold war going on in between the two camps. The researchers in the qualitative camp think the quantitative researchers are just simplifying and generalizing things and treating people um, as if there were basically boxes on a questionnaire. On the other hand, those in the quantitative camp think that those researchers doing qualitative research aren't really doing research. They're just kind of talking to one or two people and then they think that's research. But obviously, things are a little bit more complicated than that and both approaches are very valid approaches to research. Which one you should choose, that depends really on the question that you're trying to answer and I'm going to get to that towards the end of the video. But let's look at first at the main differences between qualitative and quantitative approaches and why the researchers... So first of all let's start with the quantitative methods of doing research. These methods usually are used to test a particular hypothesis. What do I mean by that? Well, you basically have an idea, a hypothesis, that you're going to try and research. So, for example, your hypothesis might be that using online courses to teach academic writing will be more effective than face-to-face -face classes when it comes to students' um, correctness in grammar. Right? That's your hypothesis and you're going to use quantitative methods to test it. Now the second characteristic of the quantitative approach is that you're going to use a much larger sample size than in qualitative approaches. You're usually at least talking in hundreds, if not several hundreds, thousands of people that you're going to survey for example. And this gives you the advantage that you're able to generalize, hopefully, the findings to a wider population. The third thing is that quantitative results will be expressed in numbers. So probably in quantitative studies or if you're reporting a quantitative study, you're going to have to use figures and tables and graphs to visualize that data. Which brings me to the last main characteristic of quantitative approaches, which is that you're going to use statistical tools, statistical analysis and approaches to analyze that data. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this video, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that little bell button so you don't miss any of
characteristic is that typically you will use a much smaller sample size. You've got a case study of a particular person. It could be two, three people. It could be also a dozen people, right? But in a qualitative approach, you will probably never have more than 20, 30 or 50 participants. That's just simply impossible because of the way how you conduct the, the, the study. Unlike in the quantitative approach where the results are expressed in numbers, in the qualitative approach, the results will be expressed in words. So, in other words, what you're going to do is write down or record participants' words, your interviewees' words, right? Uh, you might also use journals where you record your own observations and you use this as your data. And obviously this brings me to the last main characteristic of the qualitative approach is that you're not going to use statistical tools to analyze data that is expressed in words because that wouldn't make much sense. You're going to use qualitative approaches to data analysis. One of them is, for example, thematic analysis. Another one is content analysis. And depending what sort of data you've got or which branch of qualitative um, approaches you subscribe to, then you're going to choose uh, the appropriate data analysis approach. Now, a question that you might be asking yourself now is which approach is correct or which approach should I choose for my research project? The answer really depends here on your research questions and what you're trying to find out because neither qualitative nor quantitative approach is better or correct. They're both good and correct. It's just that it depends what you're trying to find out. Let me give you a quick example here and if you want to find out more about it then definitely follow my channel because I'm going to do another more in-depth video where I go through um, a step-by-step -step process to choosing your qualitative or quantitative approach to research. But in here let me just give you a quick example. So imagine you're looking at a particular medical procedure or a new drug that's just been put out and you want to check whether it actually benefits the patients and whether it actually works. So what you'd probably need to do here is a much larger scale trial with a larger group of people and in here you would probably want to do want to use quantitative approaches. However, on the other hand, maybe you're more interested in the impact of um, a particular medical procedure or a drug on a patient's quality of life and their subjective feelings. Then obviously in here, a better approach would be to use qualitative methodologies because then you could focus and zoom in on a couple of patients and interview them, for example, in depth to find out a little bit more. So if you enjoy this video, but you want to really learn how to write effective academic text, then check out my online program, Academic Writing Mastery, where over six practical modules, I walk you through step by step through all the elements and language that you need to use in order to write a successful thesis or paper. And the link is right below this video.